Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to do something really interesting. We're going to take a look at the black body radiation curve, and here we have the equation describing that curve. And it turns out that if we integrate over the entire curve, we get the intensity according to the Stefan Boltzmann's law. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that if we take the integral of the spectral emittance of an object, call that dq, integrate over dq, and then you'll see that if we integrate over the equivalent equation describing the spectral emittance of a black body radiator, then we get E sigma t to the fourth power. Remember that the power, that means the dq dt, according to the Stefan Boltzmann's law, is going to be E sigma the surface area times t to the fourth power. And if we divide both sides by the area, we get E sigma t to the fourth power. In other words, we get the emittance per square meter or per unit area. And so that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out that if we integrate over this, we get that. Now, of course, it's a little bit tricky. And to get some help, we have an integral here that's going to come in very handy. Notice that if we integrate from 0 to infinity of x cubed divided by e to the x minus 1 dx, we get pi to the 4th over 15. So we're not going to try and show you why that is the case. We're just going to take that on faith. Well, actually, I took it out of an integral book. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to make this look like this. So we're going to replace this exponent, e to the exponent, by x. So we're going to let x equal the exponent, which is hc, divided by kt lambda. And then what we're going to do is here, we're going to solve this for lambda. So we can say that lambda is equal to hc divided by ktx. Now, if you don't remember what hc and k are equal to, we describe them over there. k is the Boltzmann's constant, c is the speed of light, and h is Planck's constant. All right, we also need to do the following. We also need to say that uh, c is equal to the frequency times lambda, which means that the frequency can be written as c over lambda, and that's going to come in handy as well. So first of all, let's go ahead and replace the exponent here. Let's break this up into lambda to the fifth power and lambda squared. So that's going to be written as, uh, so we can say that dq is equal to 2 pi hc squared divided by lambda cubed lambda squared, and you'll see in just a moment why I did that, because notice we have a c over lambda, and c over lambda can be written as f. Okay, then we have uh, in parentheses e to the x minus 1. So now this looks exactly like that. We now need an x cube in the numerator. And notice since we have a lambda cube here, we can convert the lambda cube in x cube. And you'll see in just a moment how to do that. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to take c over lambda squared, and we're going to turn it into f squared. And lambda cubed, notice lambda cubed here can be turned into h cubed, c cubed over k cubed, t cubed, x cubed. All right, so that means that dq can now be written as 2 pi h. Instead of c squared over lambda squared, we're going to write f squared divided by, instead of lambda cubed, we're going to write h cubed, c cubed, so h cubed, c cubed and then divide by k cubed, t cubed, x cubed, which is going to go to the numerator, so k cubed, t cubed, x cubed, and then in the denominator we get e to the x minus 1. Notice, now we have an x cubed in the numerator and an e to the x minus 1 in the denominator, so when we integrate it, we can integrate that portion. And everything else here is just a constant, h, f, k, t, h, c, well, not quite, f is not a constant, f is a variable, as the lambda changes, of course, f changes as well. But we'll deal with that in just a moment. Okay, next. What do we do, need to do next? Uh, we have hc, hc, f. Oh, I'm missing something. I'm missing a d lambda, that's why I'm confused. d lambda should go there, d lambda should go there. So now we have a bit of a problem. Since we got rid of the lambda, and I have a d lambda there, I need to somehow get a df instead. I need, because I have an f here, I'm going to find 
df instead of d lambda. So let's take a look at that. So here we can write lambda is equal to c over f. Okay, so now that we have lambda, we can find d lambda. We're going to take the d, d, f of both sides. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to take, hmm, let me move this over just a little bit. Give me some more room to work with. So lambda equals c over f. So now I'm going to take the d, d, f of the left side and the d, d, f on the right side. Do I want to do that? No, not the d, d, f. I'm going to take the d lambda. So d lambda and make that d lambda. That's better. There we go. All right, let's do that. We're going to take the dd lambda both sides and see what happens. So on the left side, we get 1 equals. On the right side, notice we have a, um, a fraction. So we take the denominator times the derivative of the numerator with respect to lambda, because that's going to be 0, because it's a constant, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator with respect to lambda. So we get df d lambda all divided by the denominator squared, which is f squared. Okay. So then what I can do is I can say f squared is equal to, so let me go over here. I can now say that f squared, by moving f over here, is equal to minus c df d lambda, which means that d lambda can be written as minus c df over f squared. All right, so now I can put that in here instead of d lambda. So I get dq is equal to 2 pi h f squared k cubed t cubed times x cubed divided by h cubed c cubed. And then here we're going to have e to the x, oop, let's change that here, e to the x minus 1. So this is going to be integrated eventually, and then this is all going to be constant except for the f here. And then instead of d lambda, we're going to write a minus c times df over f squared. Now notice I have an f squared here, an f squared there. That cancels out, which is kind of nice. Let me take another color so you can see that. Uh, let me take red here. So we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of that. Okay. And uh, a minus c, I have a c cubed here, and I have a minus c there, so that's c. And this goes to c squared, and the minus can be kept. So now we have dq is equal to minus 2 pi h, the f squared is gone, k cubed, t cubed, times x cubed, divided by h cubed c squared times df. Okay. Now what I need is I need to convert from df to dx. If I'm going to, oh, I forgot something here. I forgot my e to the x minus 1. All right, so far so good. But now notice I have a dq on this side. I'm going to integrate that to get q, the total emittance of an object. On the right side, I have this. I'm going to integrate over x, but I have a df here. I need a dx. So how do we relate df to dx? Can we do that? Yes, we can, because notice if x is equal to this and c over lambda is equal to f, I can say that x is equal to hf over kt. Notice c over lambda is equal to f, so I replace c over lambda by f, so I have this. And now what I can do is I can take the differential of both sides and get a dx instead of df. So let's do that. Let's move over here because I have some room. So I can take the derivative of both sides, the differential of both sides, dx, is equal to h over kt times df, or df is equal to kt dx over h. So now I can do one more substitution. I can replace df by what's it equal to in terms of dx. All right, so now I have dq is equal to minus 2 pi h k cubed t cubed x cubed divided by 
h cubed c squared e to the x minus 1. And instead of df, we're going to write k t dx over h. Ah, so what do I have now? I'm going to cancel out, let's see here. I'm going to cancel out this h and this h. I have a k to the fourth, so there becomes k to the fourth. Here I have a t to the fourth. Oh, that's beginning to look promising because notice I want a t to the fourth at the end right here. So that's good. I have a t to the fourth. I have a k to the fourth. The h's cancel out and I have a dx. Now I'm ready to integrate both sides. But notice that initially I was going to integrate over lambda and I want to integrate from zero to infinity. Of course, if I then integrate over df and notice that we have a relationship between df and dx, since the frequency is the inverse of the wavelength, if I'm going to integrate over df, I have to integrate instead of from zero to infinity, I have to integrate from infinity to zero. And the same for dx, because df and dx are linearly proportional. So here we have x and f. So that means that this would also go from infinity to zero. But since I have a negative here, I can get rid of the negative by switching my integration limits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a positive and change this into infinity and change this into zero. And now all I have to do is integrate this and make this look like the Boltzmann's law, at least the intensity portion of the Boltzmann's law. Now, since I'm running out of room, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to then finish on the next video, starting from this point, integrating this and then showing that the integral of that is going to be equal to the intensity of the Boltzmann's law. So stay tuned and I'll finish it on the next video. <laughs> You're having fun with this, aren't you? <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting close. All right. Let's see if it's correct so far. <laughs> Let me take a look here. Before the integral, I'm supposed to have a 2 pi k to the 4, t to the 4, h over h cubed c squared. Hey, that looks good so far. So far, so good. All right.